It has been a fantastic five race stretch of five totally different track types. Super Speedway, Dirt Track, Short Track, no, no. Is, it, is this gonna be right at, uh, like, uh, timeline wise? Is this right after? Is this gonna be put right after Stafford? Yes, the very okay. next day. Yep. It has been a fantastic season and a fantastic way to kick off season number two of the Ansel Arca series. Five races down and five different track types Super Speedway, Dirt Track, World Course, Short Track, and mile and a half, and now we are here at our second short track, but really, this track is totally different than the first one. We are at Pikes Peak International Raceway, it's just over one mile, a D-shaped flat track, produces some great multi group racing, and we are in for another great race here today. Last year, same deal one, and we go two in a row, it's the AL Electronics 150, on the eve of Halloween. What's up everyone, it's the boy on this race 97 aka Nathan Satan here, and welcome back to honestly quickly becoming one of my favorite race tracks uh, to come to on the channel for short tracks. It is Pikes Peak. This track is fantastic too. Easy goes away racing sometimes three, and we it's wide enough for four wides sometimes as well. This place is a, a gem that has been hidden, and we are back once again. And uh Let's see what happens. Last year, Sam Badia won. He starts fourth year today, and he's up there in the points and he's yet to get a race win. But join me up here in the booth, it's Boston Minute. Last night, we covered a banger of a Stafford race, and we had to quickly put a flight all the way out here to Colorado. But we made it, and Bronson, welcome to Pikes Peak. Thank you for having me back in the booth, Nathan. Hello, everybody. And yes, as he was saying, well, two things, as he was saying. This is also becoming one of my favorite racetracks last season. Absolute banger. If there was a category of bangers, this is this is that. This is that track. Just a banger. We had fantastic racing, three wide, four wide, and a great finish between Will Parrish and Nicholas Samadillo, both in this field. Of course, the winner in the 18 starts in the second row, but also uh, point number two that uh, I agree with Nathan is that yes, we did have to make a very quick turnaround. We booked a jet flu blight, a jet blue flight rather, and it went about as well as you imagine for jet blue. And of course, Jack Haas, who was in the field uh, back in Connecticut at Stafford, he hopped on the he hopped on the plane. He was like, "Hey, can you not, you know, call me to win the race so I can actually win the race?" So I was like, "Yeah, sure." But anyway, welcome to Pikes Peak, hidden, literally quite hi uh, literally hidden. Uh, right underneath Pikes Peak Mountain, of course, the biggest mountain in America. Absolutely, Fountain, Colorado, and uh, you know, it's gonna be very interesting to see what this track does with the Crispy Queen National Series next year. Um, but we've seen a, a couple of races already, and it is fantastic. You mentioned Jack Cross, he could do the sweep. Uh, last week, Bruno Diagono won the West Series race and almost won the Mayoko race. But didn't quite get the job done. This week, Jack Haas won the East Series race and he's trying to win here in the main arc the race at Pike Beat. Two totally, uh, two totally different race tracks. Do you think he can get the job done? Or do you think he might struggle a little bit trying to do the weekend sweep? Since he doesn't want me to comment on him winning at all, I, uh, I'm gonna have to say no comment to that, Nathan. So I'll just pick <laughs> somebody else in the field. But I think with him being the driver that he is, the t team owner that he is, uh, just great personality overall, of course, friend of the channel, up here in the booth uh, frequently, so I think I think he does have a good chance, especially starting here on the front row. Uh, he's, of course, coming off of that win, he's going to have a lot of momentum carrying here into Pikes Peak, so I think he does have a good shot here to win. Absolutely. Uh, before we get to the point stands, I would like to mention that a lot of drivers at the, the top of the point stands still deep in the field here today. Ronald Cunnington, Tampon, Jordan Stout, all deep in the field, and you see them right here. The 69, 73, and the 8, all deep in the field. And it's going to be interesting if runs up happening, because a, a lot of the drivers like Jay Rando, Sam Dio, the Doberman of Sustry, and some others still up front. How do you think that's going to play out with the points battle as close as it is for the top two, but as far as it is from third on back? 
I think it's going to be very aggressive, Nathan. Uh, they know the chaos that was last season. They know what this track can produce, and they're going to use the very wide corners here in turn one and two, as well as three and four, to their advantage. They're going to make up insane moves, and of course, with them leading the, the points, they're very talented, so I'm sure that they won't cause any carnage in any way to get up back to the front and challenge uh, the the front the front starters here at Pikes Peak. Absolutely. Uh, let's go ahead and go over the points. Saints Wallen Connection has a two-point lead over Tampon, the defending champion, and he's the only draw inside the top five without a waste victory yet this season. Jordan Stout, the walk on Skalimina, is in third, 15 points behind. Tied for fourth is Jay Rando, the, the Daytona, and Kyle Sussrod, the most recent double winner, both minus 23. Neko Sam Deal in six minus 24. Diakimo in seven minus 25. Juan Garcia in 8th, minus 26. St. Qual for the 9th, minus 27. And then Takashi in 10th, minus 28. So, really, from both on back is very, very tight. But you're starting to see Kennington and Pollen pull away from the field. And they do start in the back, so maybe some drives can close in during going to Pocono next week. But it is Benny Watson on the pole. And then last time, it's Jack Cost trying to do the sweep. Uh, MO2 is last week's winner at Dover, Kyle Sussua, and last year's Pice Peak winner of Mr. Edge and Nicholas Sam Dio. Row number 3 is Jay Rando and Reese Michaels. Row number 4 is the number 10 of Ryan Little and the number 57 of Zachary Fitzwater. And right at the top 10 is Zane Crawford and the number 68 of Kasumi Takashi. With that being said, 24 draws, 50 laps, one of the longer races of the season. Who do you think will win here on Halloween Eve for the answer of the series for race 6? Well, obviously not Jack Cross, although I think that he does have a very good shot. I'm just not going to say that, he, that he's going to win. But I think that um, with the experience that he has, I think Nicholas Samadilla, he's going to go back to back here at a very familiar place here at Pikes Peak. Uh, obviously knows how to win here, he knows how to win races, period. He's a very good driver. One of the best uh, coming up drivers that we've had here on the channel in recent memory, and I think he's going to get he's gonna get his team season finally started here on the right track. He, he uh, currently sits kind of not good in points, but I think that this race can definitely uh, make his trajectory right here this season. Sam Dio, a great driver on AG, the channel, and all the main your name for itself last year. Let's see what he can do here. Today, trying to go back to back at Pikes Peak is Ben Watson and Chad Cross leading us to the green with a green flag racing for the L Electron 150 and on Halloween Eve for 2024. Already three wide and almost four wide. I might have saw some people. Go a little bit wide off of turn two that happens sometimes. They get out of the gray. And there's a lot of uh, Colorado dust. And that is the four wide in the back between Giacomo and Weem. And they're going to uh, settle back down. That was close in the bat. But meanwhile, they're side by side between Sustroy and Watson. Watson trying to whip that second lane. Sustroy trying the bottom. But it's going to be Watson hanging on for the race lead. Eddie Watson holding strong. We haven't seen him be this competitive since, well, never. But anyway, he is up front leading at Pikes Peak, being chased by last race winner. Four wide down the front stretch here at Pikes Peak, going into the turn number one. How is this going to shape out? Oh, contact boy. made between the 42. Some more contact. And, and the one goes tail blows. Ball, into the 42. And they're all flying apart here at the back of the pack. Watch out. The 27 turned around Aaron Abel. 69, I believe, of Kennington has a, has got a piece of it. That's the points leader. All just all torn up, and that is the 68 of Takashi. Great race at Dover, and his race, his competitive race, is going to end early on here at Pikes Peak. Early on, lap number three, we had a crash. On lap number four, we are finally under caution. I think we saw this last year. Like early caution with these guys getting crazy and a. Uh... That's just the nature of Pikes Peak. I forgot to mention this. This track has some extreme tire wear. So, they're going to be on one set of tires always long. 
and you want to get the trap position early on and that's what these guys were trying to do three and four right, right out of the box and fortunately some cars were involved like Matthew Burnett in, in the number 55 Caleb Rose is destroyed and Abel got spun around Takashi has some damage I believe I saw one other car on the pit lane and that is Tanner Pollen in the number 8 machine mm. big developments here early on I don't know did he have a issue or is he just putting some fresh ones on might be just uh getting fresh tires on i'm entirely sure don't see too much damage on that eight machine but that's gonna put tampon all the way in the back i guess he decided to just pit well welcome to pipe speak this track is crazy at the starts and we start so let's go ahead and see what happened for caution number one in the arrow 150. Well, welcome to Pikes Peak 4 wide, two instances already in a three lap span and unfortunately this one did not look like the first one. Caleb Rose got a little bit turned by and able to force him down the racetrack and Chase Harris had nowhere to go but door slam the 42 back up in front of the 27. And if they saved it here, it would have been just fine, but then they were able to try getting back to the inside, and they basically went full wide again. And then Rose stood up the racetrack, and they were almost 4 and 5 wide here. And then Takashi turned Kibbles hard into the outside wall on two wheels. Nowhere to go for Burnett. And then John Stout turns the 75 into the 27 of Abel, gonna go for a spin. Um, I believe the number 6. But not the sister eight of tampon got a slight pit uh, a slight bit of damage I, I should say and that's why he went down payroll just to make sure that the car looked fine and honestly it does look just fine good luck performance from everyone and it ended up being a minor crash here but unfortunately for Rose, Takashi, April and a few others early on here at Pike's Peak and the speculation going in down the front stretch and going into turn one four wide was just never going to work. And then I thought, oh, maybe they got it sorted out. But then I saw Caleb Rose come down into the two and then come right in front of Takashi there. And you see the wall jets out there. That's unlike any track we go to besides probably Richmond. But the wall jets out. And then when, you, when you're up there, there is no more room when you come off the corner onto the back stretch. And... In most cases, anarchy ensues, chaos ensues. Burnett, runner-up at Stafford. He's big damage. Caleb Rose, big damage. Both decide to stay out on track for another lap. But that is how we are under caution, Nathan. Absolutely. Pikes Peak, a unique way to to say uh, the least. And you mentioned a great point of the bat stretch and very definitely for everyone involved. And... Early caution, don't think too many cars will be out, and we'll see what happens on the restart with, with Benny Watson. We have back to the green here at Pikes Peak. Welcome back to Pikes Peak International, and a crazy start already here in this one. But it will be Watson, we have back to the green with Sustry, Randall, Crawford, Sam Medeo, Michaels, Lil, Haas, Fitzwater, and Parrish, the top 10. We are only on lap 7 of 50 and we will go back green on lap 8 of 50 and as I mentioned this is one of the longer races of the season for these guys and it's going to be interesting of, of how these guys fail on the restart if it being a single file restart but also on the long term of things on how they manage the tires but Watson is currently out front and we'll see what he can do on the restart because he, he has some hungry draws behind him two previous wins already this season of Sussuai and Rando. Watson going to try and nail this restart. Green flags back out here at Pike's Peak. You see the 30 there of Jay Rando taking a look to the inside. Sustry closes the door. He's trying to come down right in front of the 25 there of Zane Crawford. Three wide going into turn number one. Benny Watson clears. There's Jay Rando all the way up to the racetrack trying to clear himself. Nothing's done there. Still three wide trying to make it four wide this gaggle of cars with the... The 18 and the 15 there, that's Reese Michaels, as well as the 18 of um, Nicholas Samadillo, pardon me. Still side by side for P2 and P4, they're in the battle there. Three wide there behind this gaggle of cars, but meanwhile, Benny Watson for the time being has checked out down the backstretch. A crazy restart, the Stelson and restart is absolutely insane. Look at this move from Jack Haas, 
from top to bottom, three wide. For, I believe, the, the sixth position, Haas and the same with Dio and Sussride battling for this spot. There might be a couple of cars off the pace in the back, and unfortunately, one of them might be tampon in the number eight machine. Just got a little bit of damage in that incident and might be affecting him. But how about this great one from Derek Hamilton's development driver, Reese Michaels in the number 15. Side by side with Jane Randall for the third position. Randall trying to win that second lane. Very competitive lane. But it looks like it's going to go to uh, Reese Michaels for that third position. And that will be the case. That'll be 11 to 50. Chase Harris who almost got turned in that first instant of the day. He's up front making some moves with Push as well. And how about Jonas Stout making it three wide and some throw. Oh my goodness, why little? What an aggressive move by Little there. He's going to get put in the middle of three wide. The 18, he's falling back big time. Sam and Dio has, that is the race winner from last season. He's all the way back here in the mid pack. I'm not sure what position that's for. 12. The 18 is in P12 there. That is not good early on, but there's still plenty of race left. But meanwhile, up front, majority of the field has single filed out. Benny Watson still leads by six tenths. Reese Michael trying to take a look to the inside of the 25 there of Zane Crawford. And if you remember, Reese Michael had an abysmal season last season, so it's very good to see Reese Michael finally be competitive up here trying to take a look and clear for P2 with herself and Zane Crawford. The 30 of Jay Rando up here. Nice to see him up here. And is that the two there? That is the two. Good comeback oh, from Chase boy. Harris. Three wide for P number four there. P number three, rather. And Chase Harris clears that gaggle of cars in that battle. And now it's just going to be a side-by-side -side battle between Crawford and Rando there. The top three have checked out, cleared. Reese Michael trying to defend her spot there for P2 against Chase Harris. But meanwhile, still Benny Watson leading a bunch of laps here in his run for a win. He... When was the last time he won? It's been a while since Benny Watson period has been up front in a race. He did have some success in the Power Truck Series this season. I can't remember if he won or not. Uh, I know he made the chase at least, but I don't know if he won a race this season. But trying to get a win nevertheless, definitely a long time driver on the channel. And so is Chase Harris, mostly a owner, but uh... Dipping his toes into Arca, won the East Championship last season, has had a rough start to this season without a shadow of a doubt, running 17th in points, starting to get some mojo back into his system, and running in the second position now. How about Jay Randall though? He's been really consistent, two top 10s in the first five races, fourth in the point standings, and right now, Jay Randall, Andrew, and Stout are running inside the top 10. Meanwhile, Ron Kennington and the number 8 of Tampon are outside the top 18. Kennington is the 19th and Tampon is in 21st. Yikes, that is not good for Tanner Parton's run for the lead of the championship. Just, just kind of uh, going down the resume so far of Reese Michael this season. One top 10 in five races and hopefully that She'll at least get a top five when she leaves uh, Pikes Peak. Hopefully with a win. That's her hope. But I'm pretty sure that's a hope for all of these drivers. Otherwise, why would they be racing? Either way, the race still goes on. Jay Rando trying to chase after Michaels there going into turn number one. Michaels fell back to P number three after getting passed by Chase Harris. Harris kind of closing down, chasing down Benny Watson there in the 97. Side-by-side -side battle. The first one here in a little bit. That's a 73 of Jordan Stout taking a peek to the inside of Will Parrish. Side by side still off the corner. The 57 trying to take a peek. That's Zachary Fitzwater. Nice to see him back here in the series. Going into turn number one still side by side. Might see this fizzle out. The 73 might clear off the corner going into turn number... Well, not that, that's not turn number. That's the back stretch. Going into turn number three rather. Still side by side. Good battle here. Ooh, Fitzy. <laughs> Angry Fitzy right there got into the corner panel of the Zero Sister Parish, and this uh, racetrack has quickly turned into one of both of our favorites. And I am very excited of what the Quiz Between National Series does, and they return in one of the uh, standalone standalone events that they will have next year. But how about Jamie? We are up to the third position, gonna take that spot away from Reese Michaels. 
And how about this battle for the waist leads heating up? Hill is closing in to the foul bumper of Benny Watson. Already on that 21 of 50 side by side for third, and we might have a battle for the waist lead momentarily. Remember that spotter camera that we broke out? Uh, at Stafford, we might have to break it out here. There's just a bunch of battles. We got the battle for the lead, <laughs> battle for P3, battle for P4 here, uh, shaping up here. We got four cars racing for P number two. Jack Haas is getting into this battle, but Jake Rando is going to clear Reese Michaels going down the front stretch. Chase Harris is going to try and take a peek to the inside. There he is, Chase Harris to the inside of Benny Watson. Benny Watson tried to defend his his uh, position for so long, but. He just had to concede the tires are not what they used to be. And now it is going to be Chase Harris reclaiming P number one and leading here at Pikes Peak. Benny Moss is going to try and gather his stuff up to try and chase down the number two. But new leader here at Pikes Peak, Chase Harris, the season one East champion. And you have to mention, well, I have to mention it again. Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. This race track, you can just tell it has a old one out surface and... There won't be any pit stops, but it's still going to be a ton of tire already. 23 laps in, and it's, it's 4 to 5 tenths of a second, and it's going to be about a second, if not more, at the end of this one. So, definitely going to play in the fat to here. And Hale's already starting to pull away, but Watson starting to catch back in. Rando in, in third, Zane Crawford in fourth, and that about Haas back up to inside the top five. Drummer Stout inside of Reese Michaels. And unfortunately, Sam Deal is still dropping like a stone throughout the field. Ronald Kennington gained a few positions. And unfortunately, Tampon, I didn't see him have too much damage, but that must be affecting him just enough. He is off the pace, and he wants uh, Ronald Kennington to not make up as many spots as he can. Because it's not looking too good for Tampon at the moment, as Kennington about turned Bradley Weem off of turn number two. As of now, number 8 is in 21st, and Ronald Kennington is on the move up inside the top 15. Luckily for Tanner Parton, it's kind of in his benefit that Ronald Kennington Jr. has not made up a bunch of positions. So, kind of within the same range, but whether or not for Tanner Parton, it's still not good for his points, uh, for his uh, points oh. battle here. Meanwhile, going into turn number 3, we have a 3 wide battle. For which position is this, Nathan? Um, I think fifth place. Fifth place. Big battle. Jack Haas got squeezed all the way out. Couldn't stay on the outside, of course. If he stayed in that battle, he would have been in the wall. But Reese Michael holding her lane there for P number five, the 73 of... <laughs> Zach, uh, I almost said Jordan Stout. Or I almost said Zachary Fitzwater. That's Jordan Stout in the 73. 57 there of Zachary Fitzwater. There he is. There's my boy. He's getting up there trying to battle Reese Michael for P number five and it's getting heated up here, Nathan. And just like that, we almost have 20 laps to go here at Pikes Peak, Colorado. Yeah, like you said, almost 20 laps to go. About 23, I believe, to be exact. And it's a little bit of a longer race, but this can go on by pretty quickly if we stay green long enough. Jordan Stout almost to the back on of Fitzwater, but it gets chopped off. Fantastic stuff here already, and I'm very intrigued of what we see with 36 cars on the way so instead of 24 in the Crispy Queen National Series. But right now, Chase Harris is starting to check out from Ben Watson, and he has a three-quarter of a second lead at the moment. A great one for that number two machine. Ben Watson starting to get caught a little bit by Jay Randall in the third position. Crawford pulling away, and we still got this t fifth place battle hanging up still. Between Fitzwater, Michael, Stout, Garcia, Sustry, we got like seven colors battling from fifth to twelfth here at, at Pice Peak. It's a good battle. The twenty there slides up. He tried to hold it to the inside, but of course, tire wear a big talking point going into today, as well as just this track being an absolute cheese grinder. Twenty slides up, absolutely destroys tires. Reese Michael was to the inside, had her lane, but is now being shuffled out. 20 is going to try and take a peek to the inside as well, as if uh, the 02 there of Kyler Sustry doesn't, and he is there three wide off the no corner. No contact! No contact! And the 
20 almost gets into the 15. Reese Michael keeps it off the wall. They keep going. We're still green. And it's happy, joy, rainbows, unicorns, all of that. Because we're still racing. Jack Haas back into, back into the mix of this. Toyota teammates. That Toyota 3 wide there, Nathan. Jack Haas to the inside. Reese Michaels clears. Going into the corner. Almost chops off the nose there of uh, Jack Haas. But now, Love is going to slide up almost into the wall. It's going to get tight. Oh my goodness, Nathan. Great battle going on here, but just to highlight Chase Harris, the leader who has almost grown to a one second lead. Oh my goodness, Jack Haas almost four wide for a second, back to three wide, the 06 over a parish. He needs this. This is a good uh, points position for him. Oh, the Jack Haas get make contact with the 20. There is so much accent action going on with Garcia and himself. Stuck into the middle of three wide there. Here comes Kennington out of absolutely nowhere, Nathan. Where did he come from, Nathan? But just to <laughs> quickly highlight, Chase Harris, the leader, almost a second lead, almost four wide. Can I get out the sentence with <laughs> being a good battle, Nathan? Reese Michaels to the inside. Is, uh, and Jack Haas just cannot stay out of a three wide middle situation. He's been in a middle situation for about three laps. Reese Michaels slides up, contact made. I'm going to try and get this out as fast as possible. Chase Harris, one top five, two top tens. He's going to try and finally get that win here today. And it looks like the battles have finally cleared out since I've said that. So I just wanted to say that now up to a second and a tenth lead over Benny Watson in the field. Oh, man, that battle was absolutely wild. And, uh, I need some new lungs. <laughs> that was insane. And we still got 16 laps to go, Watson. The 16 on how oh, about... Goodness. How about Kennington? He's in the back and did a great, a great work for him since he might have a long one call. He had a long one call at Kansas and he got a win there. I don't think he can win here today, but he is uh, clicking them off one by one and Ronald Kennington could have a massive point lead over the second place, whoever that might be going to Pokemon next week. We got a four call twain between Crawford Fitzwater, Stout, and Sustry. That is for fourth through seventh. And Lando and Watson and Harris are all evenly spread out. But Harris still, have, still has a one second advantage over Watson. Who's having a great one for his own right. But this could be interesting because uh, Jordan Stout, or not Jordan Stout, uh, Jay Lando, he might not be that many positions ahead of Ronald Kennington, but he has plenty enough spots. Ahead of that number eight of Tanner Pollen, but he could leave your second end points going into Pocono. That's a great uh, observation and point. A lot of these drivers, they're very quiet uh, with how they, they climb up the, the points ladder, but just like Jay Rando, very quiet season, but he's been sneakily up there. He's, he's had himself a great season so far, and if he finishes top three, top two, that's going to be a great points run, and he is definitely going to be up going into Pocono. But what Chase, what Chase Harris definitely does not want to see is a caution. I'm sure with the chaos that Pikes Peak brings as we are closing in on 10 laps to go, a caution that is bound to happen, but hopefully we got it out of our system already early on. Of course, with that backstretch crash, you see the uh, skid marks there. But we see three wide back there, almost a four wide situation. That's still Reese Michael holding off this big battle of Toyota. That's actually all, all Toyota battle there. That's the 06 of Ter or that's the 06 of Will Parrish rather, the 27 of Aaron Abel, the 20 of Juan Garcia, and of course Reese Michael clears this battle. But of course the possibility of three wide, just a big battle of cars, big back, big gaggle of cars. Gaggle might be my favorite word that I use here on this channel, Nathan. But just as long as a caution doesn't come out, I think Chase Harris is going to cruise as we, as you can see up on the leaderboard, a second and a and a uh, three-tenth lead over Benny Watson. Yeah, uh, if a caution doesn't come out, Chase Harris is almost guaranteed to win. But of course, this is racing. Anything can happen. It is not over until that checkered flag flies. Absolutely. We've seen it a lot this year. Do I remind you of Richmond and the JBL Cup Series? The race leader did not want to win, apparently, because that changed so many times. But right now, Chase Harris is absolutely dominating. Randall starting to close in a little bit more to Benny Watson. would like to mention... The 75, oh boy, uh, before that, we got lapsed traffic of, of uh, Caleb Bowles in the 42. The 75 of Eleanor Mendoza had a tire go down and is now 
four laps down. So top lane for Mendoza. And we'll see if how, this, uh, how much the slow sound is. Don't think it will a lot. Uh, got a good point from uh, Caleb Bowles right there. And he's going to go way wide it, as well. And Chase Harris might just... Uh, that might be the last obstacle for that number two. And it might be cruising onto the race one here today. Highlighting Eleanor uh, Mendoza there. You know, had a great points climb up the ladder. Currently sits 14th, was 18th, but made up four spots. Two top 10 so far this season. You know, definitely not what you want to see. Definitely not what you want to have late in this race. But closing in with five laps to go, of course, anything is possible. The 0-2 of Sustry to the inside of the 25 of Zane Crawford. And the 73 of Jordan Stout clears this battle, trying to escape with while he still can. Because we know Sustry is quick. At Dover, he showed just how fast he actually is as a driver. I think he's one of the more talented uh, up-and-coming drivers that we've had here on the channel uh, as of late, Nathan. Side-by-side side between Crawford and the angry Australians himself. That is Zachary Fitzwater, my good friend. Good friend of the channel, good friend of uh, Nathan, of course. He's just a good friend uh, overall, but fortunately the numbers just don't show up, Nathan. I wish I wish he had better runs. Of course, he had that stellar performance in the Truck Series last season, but hopefully today uh, is the start of some great results, Nathan, as we now have five laps to go. Absolutely. Fitzwell has had a much better season this season in the Alka Series compared to last season. All he has three top tens and trying to hang on and get a possible uh, fourth top 10 and maybe even a top 5 if he can get past Carlos Sustry. Both of these drivers I'm very interested in what they can do in the JBL Cup Series next year. Sustry is driving in number 17 for Will Parrish and that was honestly probably one of the top 2 or 3 best cars all season. And then of course Zachary Fitzroy is joining Spy Most was in Cable a Kale Bowles' team in the third 71, and that team won the championship with Josh Remsen. So I'm looking forward to both of those draws. Very looking forward to everything with the JBL Cup Series next season. I think it would be very ultra competitive, and I think the schedule is going to be just as fun as last year. How about Ronald Kennington? He, he's a guy that wants some momentum going into next season and in the Cup Series, and he might do that by winning here in the Arca Series Championship. Already up inside the top seven now with that move. And Ronald Kennington, he is a man on the mission here uh, today at Pikes Peak. Two laps to go here at Pikes Peak. Chase Harris going into this race P17 in points. He absolutely needed this run. Battle for P2 is heating up, but I just don't think that Rando is going to be able to catch Benny Watson going down the backstretch. Coming to take the white flag in turns three and four. It has been an absolutely dominating performance since halfway, and now he gets to see the rewarding white flag in the air. That means one more time around. He just needs to do one more clean lap, and if the caution comes out while well, the race is over, what what a performance by Chase Harris. Ever since the halfway mark, it has just been his race. It was Benny Watson's in the first half, and now Chase Harris gets to take home the checkered flag after a very rewarding and dominating second half here in the Arrow at the Aero Electronics 150 here at Pikes Peak. The East Series champion gets the win in Main Arca. Chase Hills wins the Aero 150. Like you said, Watson dominated the first half, but got a great restart, pounced down it, and Chase Hills dominated the second half and wins. And this could be a crucial stepping point right before the halfway point of the season. And who knows, we can never count Chase Hills. We can never count out the East Series champion. Great one from Watson and second great one from Jay Wingler in third as well. But Chase Harris, the East Series champ, with his first win in the main of the series. Once again, fantastic battles all day long. And I am very much looking forward to the West Series title uh, in December. That series will end at High Speak once again. And, and then, of course, for the Crispy Cream National Series next year. And, who knows, maybe one day we might get the JBL Cup season here, because this threat certainly deserves it. Harris gets the win, Watson in second, Rando, Stout, and Zestroy. Great one from Stout, I don't know, in the fourth position. And then Fitzwater gets six, that is his fourth top ten, not quite a top five. And then Ronald Kennington started all the way in the back, 
in 18th today, and he gets a top 7 finish. Crawford, Garcia, and Michaels the top 10. Um, shout out to Enable, spun out down the bat stretch, cut the car in one piece, and he finishes in the 11th position still. Diakmo in 12th, Gutierrez in 13th. Parrish, Lil, the top 15. Reem, Jawani, Haas. Tough to wait for Sam Dio uh, here today. Just he did not have the car like he did last year, and unfortunately, at this race spot. And then Takashi had damage, and Pollen had strange damage with that white front tap in that incident, and this was never the same. Definitely going to be a big point hit for Pollen. But Kennington just absolutely dominating here this season. And then Rose minus one lap down, and then Mendoza had a tie go down minus four, and then Burnett was only caught out. Who suffered from that clash off turn number two. What's your final thoughts of a once again another banger here at Pikes Peak for the Aero 150 for season two? Well, I mean, looking where the 18 finished, as you were saying, maybe they got the setup wrong, but ultimately I think that there's a bigger picture here. It's letting me choose the winner, Nathan. That is the biggest problem here. Out, and I have a stat for you. Out of every 30 drivers, one doesn't win because I choose them to win. That made absolutely no sense, but you you, you get the point. Stop having me choose the winner because it, it happened to Jack Haas. He didn't win. Uh, I think it was at Dover, I think it was. And then he wrecked with on the third lap or something. And then Sam Dio felt like a rock. He was up front for the first 10 laps-ish, and then he just felt like a rock. I think that there's a bigger picture going on. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's something in the universe going on, but all in all, Pikes Peak always delivers. Second year we've come here, and yeah, you were talking about uh, 24 drivers here on field. I cannot wait till we have 36. That's going to be that's going to be very fun. Nathan. So always a treat to be here at Pikes Peak. Um, and I apologize for that voice crack. That was that was actually that was actually cringe. <laughs> uh, Pikes Peak never disappoints. Bill Matron road to the West Series finale here in December, and of course for the Quiz Between National Series next year as well. Here's the points entering Pocono next week, the Tricky Triangle, and after that one we will be halfway through season number two already. Ron Kennington is st uh, still going to be the point leader, and he's going to have a 12 point lead over John Stout in second. Tampon is going to be in third, minus 16. Jay Rando in fourth, minus 19. Sustry in fifth, minus 21. Watson in 6 minus 25, went plus 6 in points. Green one for him, even though he got second. 7th is going to be Juan Garcia and St. Crawford, minus 28. Giacomo in 9th, minus 30. And Zachary Fitzwell also minus 30. So, the, the more of the story here today, Watson, is that Juan Kennington might just be the champion. We might have to give him the title one way so he's like we did last year with Tampa. And, um, or, or in the JBL Cup Series, we gave Rakowski the championship, but he didn't win it. So maybe that might be the case, Nathan. That is also a very valid point, because we still have <laughs> some very wild race tracks on the color for this series. And for season number two, we got Pocono next week. That track is always wild. And then, oh yeah, Talladega, Charlotte, Devil's Bow, Indianapolis Raceway, Park, Chicagoland. One of the crazy smile halves we go to and then Toledo and then New Simona. That track we saw last year was wild. Uh, see what happens there. We're not done yet. Pocono will be the halfway point, but we'll see if Kennington can continue with this momentum throughout the second half and we'll see what happens at the Tricky Triangle next time out. The Snapple Mango Madness 150. And uh, congratulations to Chase Hills on the least win. In the Aero Electronics 150. And for Blonde Man, I'm Nathan Safeton, aka MSWS97. And we will see you guys next week for the little screen step ladder for the West Series, uh, Langley for the East Series, and Pocono for Main Arca. See ya. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.